A man is a man and a woman is a woman. That's just common sense. These refreshingly frank words were part of a recent speech by British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. And there's more. And I'm going to play a short video of his speech shortly because everybody should hear it. In Australia, we also have brave parliamentarians ready to expend political capital in order to freely speak truth about sex and gender. In a recent speech to the New South Wales Parliament, Labor member Greg Donnelly raised concerns about the conduct of so-called gender-affirming care at Maple Leaf House, a children's gender clinic near Newcastle. His concerns are shared by MPs in other Australian jurisdictions. Victorian MLC, Moira Deeming, she's called for an inquiry into gender-affirming care in her state. South Australian Federal Senator Alex Antic has proposed new legislation that would stop health practitioners from providing gender interventions to a child. His bill is called the Childhood Gender Transition Prohibition Bill 2023, and it's well overdue. We know from personal stories, from Hansard reports and from media that experienced clinicians are raising concerns about the massive increase in the use of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones by gender clinics around the country on children, detrimentally affecting their health for the rest of their lives. Greg Donnelly spoke in Parliament of parents being coerced into complying with treatment recommendations made in the absence of careful diagnostic screening. It's hard to imagine how they can get away with this, particularly in light of the increasing limitation and even prohibition being placed on those same treatments overseas. Which brings me back to the UK PM, Rishi Sunak. Let's hear what he had to say. It also shouldn't be controversial for parents to know what their children are being taught in school about relationships. Patients should know when hospitals are talking about men or women. And we shouldn't get bullied. And we shouldn't get bullied into believing that people can be any sex they want to be. They can't. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. That's just common sense. Bravo, Mr Sunak. He is one of a growing number of global leaders who are prepared to state publicly that an acceptance of the binary nature of biological sex is fundamentally important to life, not to mention women's rights and women's spaces. The UK Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, has proposed a plan to have female hospital wards in England only treat females. Imagine that. He also said that from now on, sex-specific language would be used when dealing with women's health. Meanwhile, back in the land of Oz, our bureaucrats busy themselves mandating politically correct language, replacing breastfeeding with chest feeding, pregnant people rather than pregnant women, even mothers is the wrong thing to say. It's madness. Recently, I had the immense privilege of accompanying into a state parliament a significant number of parents from around Australia, along with medical practitioners, lawyers, and a brave young detransitioner to bear witness to the devastation that gender affirmation therapy has caused them and their families, and to advocate for an inquiry into the debilitating practice of gender affirmation, medicalization, and all that accompanies it. It was an honor. But I heard stories that mirrored Greg Donnelly's speech to Parliament as he gave details of how medical interventions are anticipated, even ahead of proper diagnosis. Quoting directly from one of those affected, he read this. He said, it is not uncommon for the first clinical appointment to be with an endocrinologist who recommends and endorses specific off-label hormonal treatment before any psychological or psychiatric evaluation has been conducted. So in quick succession, what we're seeing is young people are diagnosed, then put on a pathway to regret. Testosterone, double mastectomy, hysterectomy. But as the fallout grows from what is an experimental trial, parliamentarians are starting to listen. It is within their power to legislate for child-centred, holistic care for gender dysphoric children and to stop gender fluid ideology being taught to young children at school where the confusion so often starts. In primary schools around our nation, young, impressionable children are being taught the cruel lie that they can choose to be either a boy or a girl. And if parents don't affirm a child's request to identify as the opposite sex for whatever reason, education department policies in most Australian states allow for children to be transitioned without parental consent or even knowledge. 
spending time with the parents of children who suffer from gender dysphoria and with young people who are now detransitioning, sorry, is heartbreaking. But I'm, I'm so inspired by their determination to do what they can to save others from the pain they are experiencing. They are working tirelessly for the good of every Australian child and family to stop so-called conversion therapy laws in Australia, knowing as they do that the only form of conversion therapy happening in our country is mandatory gender affirmation therapy for vulnerable children. And this is the very thing that the so-called conversion therapy laws protect and promote. Parental rights to direct the upbringing and education of their child are being denied. Many feel alone and isolated, scared of voicing their concern for fear of reprisal, which can include losing their children. But in a recent independent Compass poll, a majority of Australians, over 78% in fact, oppose primary school children being taught that they can change their sex and gender through social transitioning, puberty blockers, hormone treatment and surgery. 74% of Australians oppose boys who identify as girls being allowed access to girls' change rooms and toilets and vice versa. The full poll results can be found on the ACL website and it makes for very interesting reading. Affirmation therapy for gender dysphoric children places them on a pathway of lifelong medicalisation, including puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones and body-harming surgery. Whilst Australian gender clinics continue to mandate gender affirmation therapy for these children, countries such as Sweden, Denmark, Finland, France, the US and the UK are all reviewing, re-evaluating and advising caution, even banning it. We will not stop until this practice stops here in Australia. Please support us in this. God bless you. <laughs>